I'm at a gypsy. So I guess the I guess the another little topic I want to cover before we finish up is obviously the battles between you and Carmichael. So you were kind of the guy that came in and was able to hold it to Stefan, who was the goat of Europe in many people's eyes. Um, and then you go to the US. First of all, you win. I think you were the first rider, uh, European rider, to win the opener. Like the yeah, first, yeah, so you won yeah. Anaheim one. Yeah. So I mean, that's it was Coliseum at the time. It was oh, the LA Anaheim Coliseum. One. That's yeah. right. Yep, yep, LA yep. Coliseum. So you you immediately make a statement in Supercross in Europe. But I think a lot of people remember you for the crazy battles that you had with RC. Many of them, yeah. <laughs> so what, I guess, do you remember from, from that time period? And, I mean, there's interviews. I was listening before we started doing this. There's interviews where Carmichael just straight up says, I had nothing for him. And, I mean, maybe James, that's the only other guy that you'd ever hear Carmichael say that about on the podium. So, I mean, that's a pretty crazy error. Uh, no, no. I mean, uh, racing RC was, like I say, I was racing my, my mirror. So I think, you know, uh, it, it was, um, it's, it's the toughest thing you ever have, you know, racing yourself. And mm, That's and such a cool way to put it. Yeah. I mean, I know RC, basically I knew him because he was like me, yeah. you know, and I knew, and I, I knew how he was thinking. I knew that he was what he was capable of doing and, and, and push the limits and with no second thought about it. And um, when you get a guy like that, it's, uh, I mean, it's a fight, you know, it's a fight. It's like a it's gladiator flight. A fight at that point. You know, it's, it's a gladiator out there on the arena and then, you know, we have our tools and let's go for it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, I knew it was not even a question, you know, if he was going to be ready at each race or not. He was always going to be ready. And, um, and many years I, I, I was leading the championship for the nationals for, you know, three five races and then he would pick it up on me and then you know i mean it, there's many things happen and i guess you at the end of the day he was a little bit better at the right time mm. and and that's that's the way it is you know he had the the right opportunity to to get it done maybe his setup was a little bit better than mine um there's it could be many reason you know um I was a, I was born a fighter anyway, no matter what. So I was not gonna give up and, and not let him have it. And um, what can I say? I mean, we battled hard for sure. Uh, any conditions, any things. It was not a question of when or what. It was just a question I had to beat him. And there's many races where I won the first race and he won the second race and he got the overall, I didn't. And, and that was, you know, a lot of things like that happened, but we were racing on the same level. And I think it depends of the day, depend of, uh, you know, a racer is when you got two people on the on the highest level, there's not not a lot yeah, so to slim. offset the balance. Yeah. And, um, and and what, what can I say? I mean, it's for sure I was dedicated. Uh, for sure he was dedicated, no question. I mean, we came, you know, we were teammate for bunch of years on top of it so that make it even harder mm. um but uh, you know what was going on the track was on the track was off the track was off the track and we get along very well and there was never any issue between us and never you know a, a problem on that side um i mean for sure i saw red a couple of times when i raced against him and i wanted to kill him for that was normal but you know it's it's through racing and I'm, I'm sure it was the same for him i mean he was like you know i was the guy who could create a problem in his plan and he was the guy who created a problem in my plan yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's you know days you know switches i think it's uh, when you race the switch goes on and and off and sometimes it's the little difference will make a big difference at the end of the day. Yeah. But it was not a question of, you know, seeing that he was, 
I mean, I see him doing stuff that I would like, fuck, if I was doing that in front, I mean, I would be like crashing my brain out and he walk away from it like nothing, like a feather. And I'm like, okay, you know, that's the way it is. You got to do better. You got to be better. And uh, that's, you know, I tried. And uh, well, he got the best at the end of it. But um, I mean, I look, up, I look it back and I have no regrets. You know, that's, that's the only thing that I can have is I knew I did my best and I tried. And that's, that's for me, that's what made me be able to, to sleep at night. You know, I was not giving up. I never did give up. And that was the way I was. And I just maybe, uh, you know, I think through my racing in the US, I did a couple of mistakes, which was, I think, from being a European, going straight to the, the main class in Supercross was a little mistake that I did. And I should have gone to the light class first and do my classes in Supercross, racing outdoors, big bike, no problem. But racing Supercross in the light class would have been a good learning curve instead of going straight to the to the 250 or 450. Which so, Chad ended up learning from that. Yeah, and I think that was the best, best thing they did. And uh, if you look at the European guys who succeed in the US, did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Ken Roxon did it. Uh, David Willman did it that way. So I think that was a mistake on my part. But you um, don't know what you don't know. No, we don't know what you don't know. Or, or I was not. Um, I was hired to race the 250 uh, with Honda, and they, they wanted a rider for the 250, and that's the way it was. Was that bike pretty terrible? Uh, I would say it was not my, the best bike I ever rode, for yeah, sure. Yeah, because I've got a 98 CR250, yeah. and the chassis is sitting in the roof of my dad's shed. We don't use it. It's Believe me, we raced with the first generation of chassis. Not even the... We, I, I rode Honda 99. We raced with the first chassis, I believe, was 97. Seven, yeah. Yeah, the Japanese didn't let us ride with the latest because they were scared of it. So we rode with the the premium chassis at the time. I mean, the first generation. The first alloy one? Yeah, it was a little bit stronger, so that's why. And the production rule allowed us to do it. And um, I mean, that was... I, I mean, I loved my years at uh, factory Honda, uh, American Honda. That was, I think, one, um, I would say, the best team I ever got into. I mean, the race team is awesome always has been awesome. I mean, uh, best experience ever as a rider, being part of Honda was really nice. I mean, I had a really great experience when I was Kawasaki in Europe uh, because of Jan de Groot, who, uh, who, who was, you know, kind of my grandfather somewhere. He took me yeah. under his wing when I yeah. was young. Uh, I mean, I raced for him when I was uh, barely 15 and stayed until I was uh, 19. Um, but he was always like a grandfather and took care of me and, and that's something that you don't see anymore these days but as a professional team I mean Honda was by far the best um, I knew about it and a lot of people were like if you race Honda you have a lot of pressure on your shoulders and stuff like that and I didn't at all agree with that I mean uh, for me the, the team was the best team they didn't put pressure on you they were there supportive uh, they made everybody equal in the team, and that was a pretty amazing experience. That's for sure. So, but the bike itself. I mean, my, I thought my Kawasaki was better at the time. For yeah. sure. Yeah. So I've watched. I watched those battles of Ricky on a Kawasaki and you on that Honda, and I must imagine how much harder it would have been to ride that Honda. Uh, RC won the following year on the Honda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what but, year was he on the Honda though? Uh, 2009, 2000 maybe? Yeah. Nine or 2000? 2000. Did it go to, a, it went to a new frame then? Yeah, though. probably we did. Yeah, because that, I just know that that first frame is just a wild yeah, no, big No, it was, gear. I mean, it, it's the same thing. It was the first experience of aluminum chassis. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it's a learning curve. You know, yeah. when you get something new, you have a learning curve. And, um, I mean, yeah, I mean... It was, uh, for me, Honda was, you know, very dedicated. Uh, the team uh, was very professional. I know that when uh, we get parts at the time from Japan, it was like, we're a bunch of riders. We had Kevin Windham, mm. Ezra Lusk, Mikel Pichon and me. So we were four Crazy guys. Crazy era. F I mean, the team was uh, Some of the best amazing. riders ever in yeah, one team. one team. And it was handled, I mean, to the perfection, you know. When you would get uh, new parts, it was for everybody or nobody. Mm. And that was uh, the politic 
of Honda and, and the same thing for everything in house. It was like everybody get the same treatment, everybody pushed the same way, there's no question asked. And that really matters? I think as a writer, yes, it does matter because you feel considered, you feel like you know they are doing the effort to make it possible. And on top of it, you had La Rocco who was also a factory mm, rider. Mm. So all this, I mean, we're five guys. And, uh, it's unheard of now. No, no, yeah. I mean, I don't know if this year you have KTM who has all the guys coming in with the yeah, Kaoli true, coming huh? in <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, uh, Denji going back at it. So it's pretty impressive also. Um, but I think, you know, they knew how to manage things, definitely. And, uh, you know, and today, I mean, they have a great bike out there, you know, you see Sexton and, and Roxen and they, their bike is, uh, I mean, I ride only their stock bike, uh, but I can see that's a great machine also on the, on the, on the other side. And, you know, the number of championship they're gaining with a team and, and it's been working really, really well for them. So, you know, it's today, I mean, I don't know, you know, many things changed in the time. I mean, I was racing with them in, in 2009, uh, so that's 20 years ago. So things has evolved, uh, but I think the, the spirit of a team is always the, the same because that's the way they do things. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.